So the last few weeks, the big story has been uh, the scandal about uh, surveillance, the revelation that the NSA has been collecting data, what they call metadata, and all of our phone behavior, if you will. Not actual conversations that they claim, but actual behavior, how long we spend on the phone, who we're calling, who's calling whom, and all this sits in a database somewhere that they can then query. At the same time, there were always also revelations from the same source about uh, the U.S., the NSA, going through internet records, monitoring people's behavior on the internet. Now, they assure us again that this is only foreign citizens, that is, it's only foreigners that they're monitoring their behavior with Google and Apple and Facebook and, and many of the other internet providers. This is all part of, a, of a, I guess, a much bigger story, and that is the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act was passed in the aftermath of 9-11 as then keeps being renewed. Uh, so my position on all of this, including the Patriot Act, is, is this is completely uh, inappropriate for the government to be doing in the current context, uh, given, given their, their, you know, their mission in terms of uh, their claims about the war on terrorism and uh, protecting America. The reason is, is fundamentally this. Post 9-11, the U.S. government refused to name the enemy. They refused to define the war. They refused to tell us what victory meant, how that victory would be achieved, and when we would know that we had actually won the war. They called it the war on terrorism, which is basically saying that we've got a war on a tactic rather than a war on a particular enemy, a particular state, a particular ideology, a particular group of people. And therefore, it's completely open-ended in terms of how do we define terrorism, in what context, and when. In such an open-ended context, in such a context in which a war is not clearly defined, and again, really important, in which victory is not defined, and indeed, President Bush told us victory was unattainable, that this was decades and decades and decades worth of war. In such a case, it is wrong and inappropriate for the government to, to uh, pass a law that is enormous in scope. The Patriot Act has a huge scope over the government's power to, uh, to spy on us as Americans, to spy on people around the world, to collect information on us and on everybody else. It, the only monitoring of this is done through a federal court in complete and utter secrecy. So a lot of what the implementation of the Patriot Act uh, involves is we are blind to. We have no idea what's going on. Indeed, it takes a, a whistleblower uh, to reveal aspects of this program. And again, we're only seeing bits and pieces of it. We're only seeing certain aspects of a much wider program to collect information supposedly to stop terrorism or the intent to stop terrorism. Again, undefined. What is terrorism? Who are the terrorists? Who is the enemy? How do we defeat them? So this is open-ended. It can continue forever. There's no end date. There's no victory. Uh, it would be one thing if a bill was passed in wartime, where the enemy was defined, victory identified, and said, during the period of the war, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. You know, then you'd have to evaluate whether X, Y, and Z actually were needed in order to win the war. But here, since the war is undefinable, the victory is undefinable, the enemy, you know, they won't define, it's impossible to evaluate the programs. What is the standard for evaluation? It should be victory. It should be the safety from, of Americans from the enemy. But this government, this administration, the previous administration, both political parties have been too cowardly to actually define the enemy and actually engage in a war where we could actually win and identify who exactly we're going after and, and annihilate the threat. Now, all of this is made even worse. The Patriot Act and all the spying is made worse when one considers who the enemy is. Right? The enemy lives in caves. Uh, Al-Qaeda, uh, is Islamic totalitarianism, the ideology of Islamic totalitarianism, those that adhere to it, uh, groups like the Hezbollah, groups like the Islamic Jihad, but really Al-Qaeda and all its different affiliates who want to kill Americans, all the people who share this kind of ideology, if that's who the enemy is, uh, or even if it's a state like Iran or Saudi Arabia that are funding uh, these terrorist organizations, that are funding this ideology, that are spreading this ideology around the world, that have political ambitions and, and ambitions towards destroying and hurting America. 
it's a peddling enemy. It's, it's an insignificant enemy. If we actually engaged in a war with them, we would wipe them out. We could easily win this war. This is not hard to win. We don't have to spy on Americans to defeat terror, this kind of terrorism. We don't have to spy on Americans in order to defeat the threat that Islamic totalitarianism is involved in. This is an easy war to win. And if you're interested in how to win this war, uh, you know, go and read a, a book Ilan Giorno edited. I've, I've got three essays in it. Uh, Ilan has a number of essays. We've got some other authors in there. Uh, winning the Unwinnable War. It's available on Amazon. Uh, it's available on, on the Ayn Rand uh, e-store. Go, go and read that book and you can see a formula for winning this war without having all these programs, the whole Patriot Act involved in spying uh, most of the time on legitimate acti activities of Americans and of foreigners who have rights as well. So when you consider that we haven't defined the enemy, haven't engaged in a real war, uh, haven't defined what victory is, and then that if we really did do all those things, the war would be over very quickly and very easily, then the whole Patriot Act is, uh, is an abomination. And, bec and so there's another aspect to this, and that is the aspect of secrecy, the fact that we don't really know how this is being applied and what's going on. You have to remember that the government is the servant of the people. The government is there to serve us. And therefore, it is almost never appropriate for the government to have secrets. The only reason for them to have secrets is if they can convince us, we the people, that those secrets are necessary to protect our rights. So we know there's an organization called the CIA that's spying overseas on people that are threatening to us. Okay, you know, we, 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 that's a legitimate thing to keep a secret because you don't want to put those agents in jeopardy, their lives in jeopardy, and their ability to protect our, our rights. But generally, what is so secret about the fact that they're collecting meta information about us? Why not just let the world know? Hey, by the way, when you call America, as if the terrorists don't know this, right? As if the terrorists don't know that their internet stuff is, is, is being monitored or they wouldn't know this. Why so many secrets? Again, it, the perspective, our perspective is the government is serving us, not the other way around, and they're serving us and protecting us. And the burden is always on them to show us that the secrecy is necessary in order to protect our rights. And again, I don't think that's being done uh, with the Patriot Act, with much of the Patriot Act, and with, uh, and with the, uh, the programs that have uh, recently been revealed. So in summary, you know, this, this whole thing, the whole Patriot Act and all these special uh, surveillance programs are abomination. It's a growth of government. It's open-ended. It's arbitrary. There's very little clear objective definition of how to use this. Again, you can't do that unless you define the enemy clearly. It's open and it's never going to stop, right? It, when this enemy goes away, I can almost guarantee to you that they will use it for another enemy. They will find another excuse. In the meantime, they're accumulating data of all of us. And you have to be suspicious of the government. And the reason you have to be suspicious of this government is because of things like the IRS. The IRS, where the IRS was used in order to go after people who had particular political views. Well, if the IRS was used for this, why couldn't the NSA be used for this? Why couldn't the FBI be used for this? And the more data, the more information they get about us, the more potent that use could be in the future. So given the mixed economy nature of the government that we have today, given the fact that there's no semblance of recognition of individual rights among the bureaucrats and the politicians today, I am suspicious any time the government is accumulating information on us. If we had a truly limited government with a real understanding of individual rights that had declared war properly, that had defined the enemy properly, then one would consider a bill that involved spying and involved increasing secrecy where, the, where it had a clear end date, the date of victory. And again, given this particular war, I don't think such a bill would be necessary. This war could be over very quickly if we fought it properly.